welcome to the Kirkin of the Titans. I sit here hoping it's not too much of a sacrilege for a Welshman to be leading this service. I attended a Scottish founded uh, Presbyterian College in Monmouth, Illinois. And to my delight, though I had nothing to do with it, both my daughter and my son attended Scottish uh, founded colleges as well. The College of Worcester in Ohio and the McAllister in St. Paul, Minnesota. The first formal Kirkin in America was conducted in New York Avenue Presbyterian Church in Washington, D.C. in 1941. Their minister at the time was Dr. Peter Marshall, born in Scotland, who was also chaplain of the United States Senate. Beyond the particular heritage of Scotland and its people, Willow Creek's Kirken is intended to encourage all of us to reflect with thanksgiving on our own family and ethnic heritage and to celebrate God's grace poured out for all generations. And now please rise as you are able and join in the call to worship found in your bulletin. Thank you, Lord, for your word, which has ordained a rich heritage of faith and sacrifice from Adam to Noah, to Abraham to David, so onwards to the incarnation of Jesus Christ on the establishment of the character. And finally, to our brothers and sisters in Christ everywhere, never let us forget that a heritage of faith is a responsibility, not a treasure to be hoarded. Bless us that we may be a blessing, O oh Lord. Thank you, God, for the blessing of family, the warmth, comfort, and security of family love. Never let us forget that our family love is a gift to be shared, that a stranger may be warmly welcomed as kin. We praise you, O Lord, for those who have lived and died in Christ, that we might have the freedom to dwell in the community of faith. Never let us forget that the days of sacrifice are not over, that we have lived lives to live in faith. Bless us. That we On behalf of all clans, families, and nations, we raise these tartans before Almighty God in gratitude for our heritage and pray God's blessing on this earth and all lands. Please remain standing for our opening hymn. Oh, 
poor spot is so dear to my child as the lonely fish in the lake. Thank you. You may be seated. As we celebrate our past, we reflect on the present. I invite you to join me in the prayer of confession found in your bulletin. Who are you? Why have you come here rejoicing and singing? This is a fearful place. Here you will meet your God, the God of Scotland and the God of the United States. Indeed, here shall you meet the triune God of all nations. We are men and women, boys and girls, forgiven by Christ, made brothers and sisters by God. We come to rejoice with love, for this is our joyful noise. Here we meet holy heaven. Are you worthy to come here? Have you been true followers of God? No, indeed none of us are worthy on our own merit. We have sinned and fallen short of grace. We have failed in manifold ways, and we acknowledge that sin is in our hearts. And we stand here confessing our own faith, acknowledging our unworthiness, and believing that God we bring our wavering commitments and our love to God and to one another. Then let us silently talk to God, holding back nothing. Friends, believe the good news of the gospel in Jesus Christ. Since God has forgiven us, let us forgive one another. The peace of Christ be with you all. And also with you. Please share that peace as you feel comfortable in this time of COVID-19. And you may be seated. Our first scripture reading is from 2 Timothy, chapter 1, verses 3 through 7. Hear the word of the Lord. I thank God, whom I serve, as my ancestors did, with a clear conscience, as night and day I can constantly remember you in my prayers. Recalling your tears, I long to see you so that I may be filled with joy. I am reminded of your sincere faith, which first lived in your grandmother Lois and in your mother Eunice. And I am persuaded now lives in you also. For this reason, I remind you to fan into flame the gift of God which is in you through the laying on of my hands. For the Spirit of God gave uh, us, uh, does not come, 
that does not make us timid, but gives us power and love and self-discipline. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. And all God's people say, Amen. Our second scripture reading is from Deuteronomy. Chapter 6, verses 4 through 9. Hear, O Israel, the Lord our God, the Lord is one. Love the Lord your God with all your heart, with all your soul, and with all your strength. These commandments that I give you today are to be on your hearts Impress them on your children. Talk about them when you sit down and sit at home and when you walk along the road, when you lie down and when you get up. Tie them as symbols on your hands and bind them as you, on your foreheads. Write them on the door frames of your houses and on your gates. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Good morning, everyone. Good morning. The past couple of weeks, I have thought about my life with Willow Creek Church. <laughs> I found in the historical archives the beginning of our church. Apparently, there were three reasons why our settlers left Scotland. One, there was the Black Plague. Isn't it ironic that now we're in COVID-19 175 years later? Also, there were high taxes, and three people wanted to practice religious freedom. The first got settled here and gradually more people arrived. There were 51 charter members in a small wooden church and school. By 1845, the parishioners decided to erect a building on this same site. And in order to pay for the red brick building, they sold the seats at auction to the highest bidder. Those who purchased these seats would have sole ownership for themselves and their heirs as long as they paid the annual assessment. 
The sum of $31 was the highest bid. In 1962, this educational wing was built. I'd like to read a few verses from Psalm 90. Lord, through all the generations, you have been our home. Before the mountains were created, before the earth was formed, you are God without beginning or end. Satisfy us in our own earliest youth with your loving kindness, giving us constant joy to the end of our lives. In 1914, the original church steeple was blown down in a bad storm, and it was replaced in 1976. My mother-in-law, Jessie McDonald Greenley, was interviewed in her later years and told as a child coming to church by horse and buggy or in the winter by bobsled. There was a horse barn erected behind the church where you're sitting now. And she told that church was their family life other than being with relatives. Today, we are thankful for these families and their future descendants that are here with us today. I'm thankful we have welcomed many fam families into our church and the talents that each have offered. The church means a lot to me. And as I recall the many people that have made an imprint on my life, after Don and I married, we joined a married people's group called the Mariners. Don and Betty Paulson came up with a unique plan for the Mariners 4-H children. Each year, a 4-H'er was given a bread guild. And in return, after the litter was born, one pig would go to another 4-H'er. One pig was ground into sausage and the church enjoyed a pancake supper. And the rest of the litter was owned by the original 4-H'er. What an idea. The Mariners was a busy group. Going bowling, day of swimming at Lake Ripley, moving many households and taking meals to Diane and Betty Paulson each day for a couple of months when Betty was restricted to bed rest during her pregnancy. We enjoyed scavenger hunts. And one time a car was put up on jacks so not to give the opponents a lead. One occasion we were invited to visit a church on Rockford South Side to give a musical program. Well, during worship time an offering was taken and we sang a hymn and the pastor stood up and he announced, it's time to dig a little deeper. And another offering was taken. Music has always been important to the church. For many years, there was a primary choir, a junior choir, and a senior choir. The senior choir was invited to sing at the Farm Bureau's annual meeting at the Palmer House in Chicago, and that was quite an event. On Wednesday, spring and fall, the children that went to Argyle grade school would walk to the church for choir practice on Wednesdays. Yes, all by themselves. Ruth Andrew, Tom's grandmother, led the primary and junior choirs and Lois and Russell McHector in the senior choir after Ruth Lois became the organist. When I first came to the church, I recall a small man that used to sit on the rear of the fellowship hall each Sunday. He was the janitor, he stoked the furnace, he opened the church, but what I remember, when you walked in, he would always greet me with a good morning. It was a nice way to start church. There was another man that sat on the south side of the church. And each Sunday when the sermon was about to begin, he would start nodding off. And the thing is, his head got closer and closer and closer to the pew in front of him. By the start of the last hymn, I was sure he would clunk his head on the pew in front of him, but he never did. The minister knew when to wind down his sermon because we had a lady close to the front that she, when she thought it should be over, she'd raise her watch and tap it. Also, the church was closed for the month of August so that the pastor could have vacation. It's fun to remember the children's programs and plays, the retreats with the senior high kids staying in the stronghold castle, 
roller skating, sledding, the baptisms, the confirmations, the weddings, sadly funerals, and worship services given by our own lay people. We had a huge rummage sale in a storefront in South Rockford, and was it a success. I enjoyed working on many dinners and learning many things from our good cooks, Lucille Watterson and her wonderful lemon meringue cake, Sarah Greenlee and her cinnamon rolls, Carol Norm and her rhubarb pie. What better way to learn how to make gravy for 500 people? I always feel bad when people would leave our church because of differences with the minister or church members. A minister is important to leading and educating us, but to me, the church is primarily the people that are in it. Working together, learning another people's opinion and developing long-term relationships is very important to me. And as I said, we hold dear the generations of people with us but having our door open to new families is bringing opportunities. I cherish the times Les Hamilton and I sang at different functions, working with Dinah Hamilton on church decorating and she instigating the cookie walk, Dolores and Jim Hall developing babes and me and working with them as Ethan, and John and Kim Reed for the delicious pork chop dinner the respite tent at the, at the fair. There's so many new friends since coming here in 1957. I am so grateful for my church family. This past year and a half has been very trying with my numerous health issues. Last spring, I received a happy spring card from Olivia Landy, and we began corresponding, exchanging recipes activities to do, and she sent me a beautiful picture for my bulletin board. She and her sister Emma and the parents had ridden their bikes just to stop at the house to say hi. These little girls already have roots to Willow Creek. They picked me up only as a child can do. I cannot imagine life without my church and ever thankful for the opportunities to serve in so many areas of the church. Times have changed, memories don't, and neither does my faith. Now, let's welcome our new pastor, Lauren. A new beginning, fresh ideas and projects. Open your hearts and your arms to her so that she'll know our history and willingness to serve God. I'd like to close by reading from Romans chapter 12. God has given each of us the ability to do certain things well. So if God has given you the ability to prophesy, then prophesy whenever you can, as often as your faith is strong enough to receive a message from God. If your gift is that of serving others, serve them well. If you're a teacher, do a good job of teaching. If God has given you money, be generous in helping others with it. Love each other with brotherly affection and take delight in honoring each other. Thank you for the opportunity to share my thoughts. A special thank you to my wonderful Scottish husband who brought me here. The church has been an important part in raising our family and knowing that they will be a part of God's church for generations to come. Thank you for your friendship and I wish God's many blessings to each of you. Renee, <laughs> Renee, thank you so much. Uh, your message reminded me that uh, uh, in my parishes, I asked everyone, and I asked the ushers to uh, collect all the watches as people came up. Here. <laughs>
Lord, thanks for sharing all those memories. Bring, brings back a lot of good ones. In 1837, 34 year old Hugh Reed, his wife Mary, and their young daughter Margaret left Kintyre, Argyleshire, Scotland to start a better life. They got on a ship and sailed to America. They must have had a strong faith in God to take that voyage. They got as far as Ottawa, Illinois that year. Their son, William, my great-grandfather, was born in September 1837 in Ottawa, and he worked by digging in the canal. In the spring of 1838, they headed north to Winnebago County, and Hugh made a claim along Willow Creek and built a log cabin for his young family just west of where the Argyle settlement is, would be. They were the third Scottish family to settle in Harlem Township. They must have had a lot of faith in God to make that journey and start their lives over from scratch. Their faith was so strong that in 1845, they helped form Willow Creek Presbyterian Church in Argyle so the entire community could come together to worship God. They had plenty of things to do, lots of hard labor, but starting a church was a high priority. The community grew and in 1877, they dedicated this present building that we still use to worship God and share our faith. They knew the importance of having a strong foundation for generations to come. My great grandfather, William, farmed on Argyle Road. and He built the house that my grandfather, John Matthew, and my father, Wilbur Hugh, and I were raised in. We have all farmed the same land. The roots run deep. Farming was in our blood. Raising livestock, growing crops, raising a family, supporting the community. That was our way of life. And each generation of the Reed family were members of the Willow Creek Presbyterian Church. Having a strong Christian faith and believing in God is watching, believing God is watching over you provides hope that each crop will be bountiful, the livestock will stay healthy, and your family will have the foundation to be loving and caring adults. I always attended Willow Creek. My mom was a Sunday school teacher, so all four of us kids always came to Sunday school while dad would stay home and do the chores. The men would come to church. It was not uncommon to see a few of the farmers nodding off during the sermon. Sometimes a roll of candy would get passed across the aisle to keep kids quiet for a few more minutes. I remember sliding down the back banister, playing tag outside using the carriage step, which is no longer there as a goal. The children's choir left by Mrs. The children's choir led by Mrs. Andrew. Clearing tables at church suppers, the fall bazaar, going to church camp at Stronghold, youth fellowship. A lot of memories in these walls. And before I knew it, I was a young adult with a strong Christian foundation. And now I can't imagine a week without going to church. It keeps me well grounded in the Christian faith, feeling renewed and finding hope for the week to come. I love this church and what it does for our community. I feel very blessed that I was able to raise my family here with the help of the Willow Creek Church family. And I couldn't be more proud that two of my daughters are carrying on that same tradition. Where would we be today if our ancestors had not had their strong faith to make that voyage or that long journey to Northern Illinois? I hate to imagine, but by the grace of God, they did. And we have this strong foundation with deep roots for generations to come. And this remarkable building beckoning to others in the community. Thanks be to God. Because the Lord is my 
shepherd. I have everything that I need. He lets me rest in meadows green and leads me beside the quiet streams. He keeps on giving life to me and helps me to do what honors him the most. Even when walking through the dark valley of death, valley of death, I will never be afraid, for he is close beside me, guarding, guiding all the way. I made my notes on my phone. Unlike everybody else who's spoken so far, I'm a transplant. My descendants were not people that built the church. We kind of found the church. So, um, yes, we all have something in common, whether we're direct descendants of the founders of this church or, like me, adopted into the church um, somewhere along the way. I come from a history, both my parents have parents that were very firm, had a very firm foundation in the church, not specifically the Presbyterian church, but in church. My mom's mom passed away when my grandma was just a few days old from complications from childbirth back in 1904. And when she passed away, just before she passed away, she made her family promise that her children would be raised in the church. And five generations later, her descendants, all different walks of life, all different, you know, religions, different thought processes, all are raised and continue to raise their children in the church. God is very important to the family. Um, I was about eight when I started coming here. My mom started the preschool at the church, and we pretty much adopted the church and have been here ever since. Um, my sisters and I grew up here. We did youth group and uh, Sunday school and Bible school and church suppers and you know everything that everybody else mentioned. Those are all just part of, of being here. It's part of the community and the family that's here and the family that continues to come here becomes part of your family. Some of my closest, dearest friends are people that are part of this church. When I've had major crises in my life, the people who've been there for me, who've helped to support me, have been my church family. Um, funny enough, uh, when my husband and I started dating, Sunday night was youth group. My parents 
said, you're not going anywhere on Sunday night, it's youth group. So he started coming to youth group so that we could hang out on Sunday nights. It's just the church has been a portion of my life for as long as I can remember. Um, I did a little research just because I was interested when I started thinking 175 years, what, what does that mean? That's a really long time. And when I look back, 60 years prior to 1845, which is 175 years ago, marked the end of the Revolutionary War. That meant that when the church was built, there were still people who were maybe in their late teens, early 20s during the Revolutionary War that would have been in their 70s or 80s. Their President Lincoln um, was still walking around. He did his debates when our little log church was here. Um, Illinois was a state, but did you know that Wisconsin, Minnesota, and Iowa were still territories when this church was built. It just kind of was significant to me that this church has been here through such a huge part of this country's history. People have prayed in this church for the Civil War, for the World War I, World War II, Korea, Vietnam. There have been so many major things that have happened in this world that this church has stood here through and that people have worried and prayed through. And I just thought that's really pretty cool that we have this place. So that's kind of all I have to say about that. <laughs> Thank you.
as we all know, the church has been going through changes. I would like to read a Bible verse to you. It is about change. By faith, Abraham obeyed when he was called to go out to a place that he was to receive as an inheritance. And he went out, not knowing where he was going. Hebrews 11.8 Just like Abraham, we must put our faith in God. Believing in Christ is great. Now trust him. A lot of times we are afraid of so many things. We should be trusting God and putting our faith into him. Which is why our ancestors built this church. They want to change. Can you imagine trying to find a pastor here 175 years ago? Our roots and traditions are very important. I mean, I've been celebrating Kirken of the Tartans half my life. Kirken of the Tartans is important because it is a time where we can look back on where we come from and reconnect with God and pray with our ancestors. Presbyterians are a part of the Reformed tradition, which has its roots in the 16th century teachings of John Calvin, a contemporary of Martin Luther. The motto of Reformed tradition is, Reformed and always being Reformed. This is to say that Reformation is an ongoing process. This process is expressed through the Book of Confessions, Confessions in this case, being statements of faith in God, as faith is understood by the church in different historic eras. Please join me now in reading a portion of such a statement ratified by 16th century Presbyterians in Scotland. As we believe in one God, Father, Son, and Holy Ghost, so we firmly believe that from the beginning there has been, now is, and to the end of the world shall be one kirk, that is to say, one company and multitude of people chosen by God, who rightly worship and embrace God by true faith in Jesus Christ, who is the only head of the kirk even as it is the body and spouse of Christ Jesus. The Kirk is Catholic, that is, universal, because it contains the chosen of all ages, all religions, nations, and tongues, be they of the Jews or be they of the Gentiles, who have communion and society with God the Father and with God's Son, Christ Jesus, through the Holy Spirit. Through the Holy Spirit. Amen. You may be seated.
when our eyes are heavy, we dream of another world. When our spirits are low, we turn to each other. When our energy fails, we need each other's gifts all the more. We give our gifts of time, talent, and treasure to create God's kingdom of heaven. Save us, O Lord, from the temptation to buy what we do not need, from confessing what we need with what, confusing with what, what we need with what we want, for wasting what we do not own, from owning what we will never use, and from idealizing the past as a golden age. Strengthen the arm and the will of all who, for the good of the world, you made and love. Challenge our greed and conform us about uh, appropriate living. May their words gain a good hearing so that the world may have a good future. Amen.
may be seated. On behalf of the Scottish descent among us, these tartans are presented before Almighty God, seeking his blessing over these colors and the clans they represent, as well as upon the entire clan B, which is the Gaelic for all the children of God, or all of your kind. So now, please join me in the blessing of the Tartan. Almighty God, who has promised that in all places where two or three are gathered in your name, that you will meet with your servants to bless them, fulfill your sacred promise, and make this church a place of Christian love and fellowship, shared Christian heritage, worship, service, and prayer. May you bless us with the presence of the Holy Spirit. May you sanctify this time. We rejoice in this opportunity to dedicate these tartans to you as symbols of the unwavering loyalty and steadfast faith of our Scottish ancestors. We praise you for their ingenuity and integrity, for their respect of law, truth, and justice, for their rejection of hypocrisy, and for their regard of liberty, life, and equality of all people. Grant us, O oh God, the ability to remain true to the faith of our ancestors, which has enlightened, encouraged, and advanced the peoples of our beloved country and other lands. Use us to bring peace and goodwill on earth and to advance equality and justice throughout the world. In all these prayers, remembrances, and supplications, O oh God, Make us all, like the Scots of old, a people who strive to do justice, love, mercy, and walk humbly with you. In the name of our precious Savior and Head of the Kirk, Jesus Christ, the Lord. Amen. And now, go in peace of the running wave to you, deep peace of the flowing air to you, deep peace of the quiet earth to you, deep peace of the shining stars to you, deep peace of the gentle night to you. Moon and stars pour their healing light on you, deep peace of Christ, of Christ the drink of the world to you, deep peace in Christ to you. Amen. Let us pray.